to the Florida Mams. It's gonna be awesome. Ibex, an animal I've always wanted to go after. And this weekend is go time. We'll be there on the third day of the season. We'll be able to hunt for 12 days. Hopefully we get it done. The odds are definitely stacked against us because it's 2% success rate with the boat. But guess what? We're gonna show up. We're gonna dream big. So we'll see you on the map. And there it is, the Florida mountain range. Look at that, in all its glory. A second ago was just glowing. And then, oh, 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 oh baby. <laughs> Where are you going now? No, don't go out. Please don't go out. It's go time. We spot the same Ibex that we saw last night, just on the opposite side of the mountain range. It just bedded in the crevice. I think I have a crack at it. It's a single ibex, makes it easier. I'm going to try to work my way in a way that it won't be able to see me. Try to get as close as possible. See what happens. Pretty steep, but I like a good jungle gym. That's a pretty good one right there. Might kind of hunt. Let's get her done. Go hunting. We have a mountain, that highest peak right there. We just spotted a bunch of billies just below it. So we'll see if there's a way to make a play on them. Send Stefan up the mountain. I'll keep my eye on them. And hopefully... Today's the day. Hopefully today's the day. Today was by far the closest we got. We, I mean hi, because I was all the way up there, tried to cut them off as they were coming across, and I had them at 30 yards. I had the little guy, little, uh, whatever you call them, you know, not the nanny, not the billy, but the little guy coming right through, and my bow was on the ground. By the time I got to it, the wind swirled and the nanny picked me up. They were gone. They came in here, I was above them all day, and uh, they're bedded right there and uh, they gave me the slip they were feeding on the bottom right i was coming down the right to shoot them 
and they just decided to go up into the left where they came from. So that's hunting for you. But we're gonna keep trying. We got three days left. So can't believe it. 30 yards. Just that in itself is uh, you know quite an accomplishment for me because 30 yards is really close. This is really open. So I was above them. Allison couldn't see them until she saw them underneath me and I saw them and it was too late because I didn't have my bow in hand and uh, that's that, you know. I mean, I didn't even know they were close to me. I knew they, they were somewhere below me, but I had no idea they were that close. So, hey, that's hunting. I'm gonna keep trying, that's what it's all about. get away from the wind it's working because I was down in this gut right there and that's a wind tunnel I was getting blown around pretty good so I'm just waiting for the ibex next move so I figure I'd come explore this little ibex penthouse look at that it goes way deep that's the end of it right here so pretty awesome tracks and droppings everywhere so I got an Ibex just on the other side here of this mountain, just on the other side, just waiting, uh, you know, they're parked in a way that I can't get close, so pretty smart like that. Yeah, not a bad view, not a bad view at all. He really just popped his head up right in front of me over this hill. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The whole group is right in front of me. Like literally, the whole group is crossing right in front of my eyes. I can see them with my bare eyes. They're running like right toward me. I think I could get a shot. And look who made it back, down off the top of the mountain. Going in circles, chasing our tail here. So, 
We spotted them. Did a huge loop around. There's no way they could have seen me. They came right down to Allison. She got some footage. Crazy stuff. That's Ibex hunting, I guess. Par for the course. All we got to do is keep trying. But uh, pretty crazy. We're just coming out after being bamboozled by those other Ibex. And we're looking up for Allison that spotted some that we actually put to bed another morning. And they're in the same spot. Very, very good spot because they're in caves and they come right down. There's one little pinch point and that's where I'm gonna go. And they won't see me come up because it is so steep. So I'll just work my way up and hopefully by two o'clock, that's when they come down to sun themselves, we'll be in Ibex business. So, uh, pretty exciting. At least we're starting to know this mound. We know they're, what they're doing, their habits. We're getting closer. So, let's get it done. We're almost Ibex hunting experts. Well, I wouldn't, expert is a big word when it comes to Ibex, but at least we, we have a feeling for what they're doing and how they're doing it. So, that definitely helps. Right here are my three towers, as I call them, from the other day. And then there's this wall behind that faces it. And we're way too far for you to see, but there's Ibex on the wall that faces the three towers. We're right across there at 90 yards. The wind swirled, and they're gone. They went straight up, all the way up. Real bummer. Took a lot of effort to get within 100 yards. That's their beds right there. Their bed in these cliffs. Crazy stuff. I was hoping they were gonna come down and give me a shot as they come down the feet. But, uh, didn't happen. So I managed to get close to the bedded Ibex. 90 yards. And all of a sudden, one after the other, they start meandering off. So I'm trying to trail them from behind, and I'm staying in the thick stuff. And I start hearing all kinds of noises i never heard before. So I just decided to be on the safe side. Let me just jump on this rock and see what's going on. And all of a sudden, I had a heavy leanness coming at me from every direction. Today's our lucky day. That's our one, two, three, fourth group of Ibex. And this one is the mother load. <laughs> They're all piled in. Some on top, some on the bottom. It's pretty crazy. Who found them? Allison did. I'm getting good at finding Ibex. I wouldn't have looked there. Even though two nights ago they were parked there, but they didn't stay there until the last light. Now there's, I don't know, I mean, I stopped counting. There's some up high on this mountain. And then a whole load of them just piled in. Those are doves that just flew by. There's tons of doves here. But yeah, huge group on this mountain. That, you got Billy on top. All his glory. Took us a little while, a couple minutes to spot them, but I just found them. They're coming down the same mountain they were on last night but they're in this area, the bottom right. They're coming down off the mountain and they're feeding in this area right here. So Stefan's gotta get in position. Hopefully we know where they're headed and he can intercept somewhere. It's no easy feat, but gotta be in it to win it. Well, 
It's been over two hours now and the group is still basically in the same spot. The two big billies, biggest billies bedded down and some of the others bedded down and some are still eating. Stefan is positioned higher up the mountain and he's hoping that they come up and once he sees what direction he can kind of move accordingly. But so far they haven't made any kind of big move. So we're both in holding position, just watching to see what they decide to do. It's 4.13. I just sent Stefan this picture. They were down low and they moved way left. And then finally they started moving up in a line. And right now, they're right in these blue circles. Stefan's right now climbing this brown mountain from the opposite side. There's a whole load of them up near the top, right below you, all throughout my whole side, just below you. That billy might be coming up. Man, so close. I'm guessing that he didn't get a shot, but we were so, so close. Man, I gotta tell you, even though this was Stefan's archery ibex hunt, I really feel like it was my hunt too. 
I feel like I had a huge part in it. I was behind the spotting scope and my binoculars all day, every day for the last many days. I was on them basically all day long from sunrise to sunset. I got to experience exactly their behavior. I felt like I was with them. I felt like I became part of their herd. And it is just amazing to see how these nannies look out for the herd. They're always standing guard. And some of them in the other group, whatever way one is standing, the other are always standing the other way, looking for any threats coming their way. And when the nanny needs a break and wants to go eat, she puts some other ones in charge. And it's just amazing to see how they look out for each other, how they really care for each other. And even though we didn't harvest one, just having this experience for 12 and a half days of being with these ibex and trying to chase them on these crazy, steep, rocky, mountainous terrain has been an experience that neither one of us will ever soon forget. We fell in love with these ibex. We fell in love with these mountains. Sad to have to leave, but I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with us. Hope you learned something about the ibex and maybe we inspired you to want to come and do this hunt yourself. It's incredible. Well, the Floridas didn't disappoint. Had all kinds of hopes and dreams coming here. Sure, it would have been nice to get one of them big billies, but at the end of the day, we're bringing home some amazing memories. It was a great time. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life right now after having a 30 pound pack, climbing these mounds up and down all day. And uh, I feel like I'm in heck of a mountain shape. Maybe not gym shape, but definitely mountain shape. And you know, what can I say? We got to learn about these animals. Didn't really know much about them. And just following them along in the glass, it was just, you know, quite a perspective because you can see them so much because it's so open and that's what makes the hunt so hard is to get close. And the darn wind, as I'm standing here, it's going every which way. Well, that's how I was on top of that mound. And that's what made it really the hardest thing for me as a bow hunter, because as soon as it swirls, it's game over. And it happened time and time and time again. I would climb up, get close, you know, 100 yards, still pretty close. And then I was about to seal the deal, so I thought, just to feel the obviously darn wind hit my neck, and they were just gone in a jiffy. It didn't take seconds. I mean, they would just vanish. So, what do you want? It's bow hunting, but to me, that was the hardest challenge here. And I was close once that they didn't know I was there. I was on top of this dome, and they just didn't peek over. If they did, I would have gotten an Ibex. It was 20 yards, a nice panoramic view. I was waiting. But they just stopped just short and I didn't want a skyline. And at the end, I did look and sure they went. But uh, it was after shooting light. So, amazing time, amazing mounds. So lucky to have Allison, you know, to glass for me. She did a great job. She was like an eagle, really. I mean, she had eagle vision, finding them and just staying on them, really. So, we didn't lose them and I knew what to do. So, just a great time, great time outdoors. If you ever thought about doing a cool hunt, this is definitely the coolest hunt I've ever been on. And Allison too, I'm pretty sure. So, hope to catch you next time on our next adventure of Catching Dinner. Thank you so much for everyone who subscribed. Our subscribership is going through the roof. We do appreciate it. Thanks for joining our channel. We have a lot of upcoming hunts coming up. We have pheasant hunting and you name it, we got it. See you there. Till then, we're out. And saying bye to this beautiful Floridas. Man. We will miss them. Oh yeah. <laughs>